I'm Amy Cross, and forgive my voice, I'm getting over a bad cold, but I really wanted to share with you today an often missed genealogy resource, the Family History Centers. Now, many people are aware of the Family History Library in Salt Lake City, but the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints also has Family History Centers all over the world. You likely have one near you. And if you have never been there, you are missing out on a super resource. Today we are gonna to talk about all of the things that you can do in a family history center, kind of why they were created and how they work, and how you can find if you have one near you. So first off, why the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? What's the deal? Maybe you have heard of the Family History Library in Salt Lake City, maybe you haven't. Let me give you some background. In 1938, the Genealogical Society of Utah, now known as Family Search International, began microfilming vital records and other records of importance around the world. They started mostly in the United States, but they have recorded records in more than 100 languages in over 200 countries. So if you are doing research outside of the United States, Family Search is definitely a place you want to go. Now, a number of years ago, Family Search made a change and they stopped sending out microfilm to various locations and they worked to digitize all the records that their agreement allowed them to digitize and release to the public. And so most of the records on Family Search you can view now on their website. However, there still are some records that must be viewed in a Family History Center or in the Family History Library in Salt Lake City, or in an affiliate library. And a lot of people aren't aware of that, so I wanna point those out to you. There's also some other great resources in these libraries, and so we're gonna go over all of those right now. When you are looking at a record on Family Search, and you see the camera like this, that means you can click on the camera and you can view it as if you were doing the old time microfilm reading where you were flipping through, you were scrolling through microfilm and you're looking at every image. That's what they did. However, their agreements with other, with the places where they microfilm the records may make it so that they can't show that to the public in general and make it so that they can only show it at their family history centers or rarely in only the family history library. And so if you see a little lock like this, over the camera, that means that that record needs to be viewed at a family history center. If you see a reel, like a, a circle like this, that means that it's not been digitized yet. And so that gives you a good clue as to records that you can and can't see. So let's say you run across one of those records, it's something that you really want to see and it's got the lock over it and you're like, great, now I can't do anything about it. You can. If you click on the lock, it will tell you that you can view this at a Family History Center or an affiliate library. So how do you find the affiliate libraries? Let me show you how. All right, so what I have here is the link to finding a Family History Center and a Family Search affiliate library near you. I'm gonna put a link to this down in the show notes below in the notes of the um, video. So make sure you check that out if you want to find that. You can type in an address, but this shows you the different libraries. Now this icon right here means that it's a Family Search affiliate library. And that means that a particular public library has requested they become an affiliate library with Family Search. And to be honest, I don't know the process of how they go about that, but that gives them access to a lot of those locked records as well as some other things that Family Search affiliates get. Um, however, <clears throat> Sometimes it means that it doesn't give you access to all of the same records that you might find in a family search center or a family history center. Again, I want you to note that if you can look, you can see there are these libraries all over the entire world. So let me zoom in and I'm gonna show you in the United States, I'm gonna look particularly in Southern California where I live, <clears throat> all of the family history libraries that you can find around. There's so many of them. All right, so here we have Los Angeles and you can see we have a Family Search affiliate library. And this is at the Los Angeles Public Library where it gives you their phone number and their hours. And it notes that this is a Family Search affiliate and access to certain collections may be limited. But what I really want to talk to you about today are these Family History Centers. Here is a Family History Center right here. This focuses on Hispanic records, which is even more interesting. Let me go to another one. 
This gives you the address and it tells you what hours they are open right here. The, this library is also offering you help via Zoom and you go to their website and they'll give you the information on how to do it. So what's at a family history library? Why would you even wanna go other than the fact of these locked records? Well, there's more. Let me give you a little history of these family history centers and that will help explain things. The family history centers were honestly really crucial when the microfilm wasn't digitized. They didn't finish digitizing their records until shortly before COVID. So these family history centers have been super important prior to that because what you could do is you could request a microfilm, it would be set to the family history center, the Family History Center would then have microfilm readers and you could go in and you could read the microfilm. Great, super, wonderful. Well, are they any use to you anymore now that that's not the case? Yes, they are, and let me tell you how and why. One, they have computers available there which will allow you to view those locked records. You're welcome to then make a copy of that record for your of a select image for your own personal family history and that's really helpful for you. But there's other resources in these family history libraries. And especially if you're a beginner to genealogy, don't miss out on these. They're great resources. One, their computers have a lot of programs on them that you would have to pay for in other places or that you simply couldn't access from home. The second thing are the people that work in the family history libraries. They can be so very helpful, but I need to give you kind of a little bit of info on them because I think sometimes people go to these family history center libraries or family history centers, and they expect the people there to be geniuses when it comes to genealogy, and they get really frustrated when they aren't. And, and, and that's discouraging for everybody involved. The people that work in a family history center are volunteers. They're not paid. It's, an, it's a responsibility that people are asked to do for usually a couple of years. Sometimes people are there for longer. But sometimes people are asked to volunteer in the family history library as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and they don't have a lot of genealogy background. So they spend a lot of time learning, going into training and things like that so they can help people. So when you go into a family history center, some of the volunteers may not know a huge amount, but some of them know tons and tons. It just kind of depends on who's working in the family history center. But give them a little grace because they're volunteers and they're doing the very best that they can. So if you're a specific, especially a beginning genealogist, you really want to hit these family history centers. There is no charge to go there. There is no charge for any of their help. And many of them are being underutilized and they would be thrilled to see you walk in the door. Um, it is affiliated with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Most of the family history centers are within one of those church buildings. And it is staffed by members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, but there's no religious pressure or um, emphasis or anything like that. So as a genealogy hobbyist or professional, I go into them all the time. You're not going to be made uncomfortable or something like that because you're going into a church. Um, they're happy to see you. They're happy to assist you with your genealogy research, regardless of your rel religious affiliation or not religious affiliation. There's a lot of access to websites and other things that could really save you a lot of money. So let's go over what they have available to them. I'd like to insert here a request to please subscribe if this video is of help to you and like it. You can throw a comment in as well if you have something that you'd like to add. Those things help YouTube know that this video content is of use to you and helpful, and that helps me grow my channel, which I really appreciate. I've been a professional researcher for almost 10 years now, but doing research for 40, and I love working professionally, but I'm really enjoying helping other people that maybe can't afford a professional researcher discover their genealogy roots, and this YouTube channel is helping me do that, so thank you. Um, I want to spend a couple of minutes with you going over some of the other resources they have at a family history center. There's a lot of access to websites and other things that could really save you a lot of money. So let's go over what they have available to them. The first is offered by Gail. It's the British Library Newspapers. And if you're doing British research, sometimes finding newspapers can be difficult. Now there are some sites like newspapers.com who may have some British newspapers, but this is a really great site. And you need to be part of an institution in order to visit the site, but it's free at a family history library. The second is Alexander Street. Alexander Street has a bunch of different archives. 
that talk about some really great things that could assist you in your research. They include the social and cultural history, letters and diaries online. They have a research database for the American Civil War, as well as another database of letters and diaries from the American Civil War, as well as another database that has images and photographs and other items from the American Civil War. The next site that they have available for you at a family history library is American Ancestors. Now, American Ancestors is a fantastic site, and I actually am a member of it because they have tons of records of New England. They are the, American Ancestors is the New England Historic Genealogical Society. If your family goes back into early America, you definitely want to be looking at American Ancestors, and it does cost, but at a family history center, it's free. The Family History Centers also have access to Ancestry, their institutional version, which is maybe a little bit bigger than even if you have an Ancestry subscription. Sometimes you don't have a subscription to everything. And the Ancestry institution version includes like everything. You've heard me talk a lot about Ancestry. Love Ancestry. I think it's a great platform. And um, yet it can be expensive. And it's a that's a stumbling block for a lot of people. So you can go to a Family History Center and use their free version. If you're doing Swedish research, you definitely want to look at Archive Digital. That is got all kinds of information for people that are researching in Sweden. Again, you have to subscribe to that. You have to buy a subscription. But at the Family History Centers, you can view this website and look at all their records for free. If you're researching in New Zealand, you want to look at FamNet. Find My Past is available at a family history library for free. Again, that's another paid website. They have a lot of great databases in there. Um, if you're looking at British genealogy, you definitely want to be on Find My Past and um, look at what they have to offer. And again, you can avoid the cost of the membership and you can go view that at a family history library or family history center. <clears throat> Fold3 is actually owned by Ancestry. It's a separate website though. Fold3 has a ton of military records within it as well as some other records as well. Um, whenever I'm doing military research, I'm on Fold3. Um, Fold3 is pretty expensive. And so if you wanna view that for free, you can view it at a family history center. Ginianet is a website that was built in France. It specializes in French and European research. It was actually purchased by Ancestry, oh gosh, probably about four, four to six months ago. Um, but they have a separate user fee. And again, if you're doing that type of a research, you want to be on Ginianet. MyHeritage is another one that's available for free at a Family History Center. Again, it costs. MyHeritage is based in Jerusalem. If you're doing European research or if you're of Jewish heritage, you definitely want to be on MyHeritage. But my heritage has a lot of records that I use for other types of research as well, as does Find My Past. Um, Ancestry, Find My Past, and My Heritage are probably the three biggies right now in the genealogy world other than Family Search. Newspapers.com is owned by Ancestry as well. Newspapers.com is my favorite newspaper research website. Um, it's easy to use. It has a ton of newspapers within the site now, and they're adding more all the time. Newspaper research can be really helpful. You learn a lot about your family members as you look at newspapers and you can find a lot of really fun and crazy details. So don't neglect newspaper research, but don't let the cost of that website stop you from doing newspaper research. Go to a Family History Center and check it out. Paper Trail is another site that is available at a Family History Center. It focuses on westward mi migration in the United States, particularly pioneers. So if you have family that travel to Oregon or Utah or California, you might want to be checking out this site. And finally, we have Pazilla. Pazilla was really popular a while ago. I don't know that it's as popular anymore, but it has some really cool charting services. And it used the family, it works with family search, so you kind of have to have your tree in family search, but it gives you an opportunity to see your resources in um, other ways. So I hope you're recognizing that Family History Centers are great resources to, for you and that you shouldn't neglect trying to visit one. Now their hours are limited because of the fact that they are volunteer run and because they've had less interest in them. So they've cut back hours because it's hard to have people volunteer and not have anybody show up for help. There is a phone number that you can call to get more information and like I mentioned before, when you find the History Center near you, the Family History Center near you, it will tell you what their hours are. 
And again, I wanna note that these Family Search affiliate libraries, which are generally public libraries, are great resources as well. They may not have all of the same records that they have at the Family History Centers, but they have a lot of great information. Many of these public libraries that have arranged to be a Family Search affiliate library have a solid genealogy department, and they likely have librarians or other volunteers frequently from the genealogical societies in the area that can help you there as well. So it's another super resource. So don't let not knowing something stop you from exploring genealogy. You have lots of people that are willing to help you in person. Now that we're past COVID, go on in, meet with somebody, visit with them in person and get their help and expand your genealogy horizons. I hope this has been of help to you. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate that. It helps the YouTube know that my videos are worth watching. Please like it and comment, that helps as well. And I hope you have a great day, thanks.